Hi there, my name's Marion Crawford and I'm going to speak about these three works, Looking, Permutation and Everything, which explore the visual space of images created by both lines of text and by grids, all in the shape of that very familiar rectangular format, the printed page folded to form three pamphlets. I recently read Nancy Prinsenthal's insightful biography of Agnes Martin which then prompted me to wonder how little do we need to see before we register a mark as an image and how sensitive are we to signs, patterns and by extension the invisible rhythms of the world around us. All three of these books uh, were made in 2019 with relief prints, letterpress printing on zircle paper in editions of around 15 bound with a three-hole pamphlet stitch, and they're all A5 size. Looking is printed in warm tangerine, maybe orange ink. The first page presents the title, Looking. The second page presents an image. Printed from a found curtain fabric, this humble matrix, which is just fabric glued to a piece of card, when it's printed, it's trans transformed into a pattern of dots that grow from small to large across the page. The dots are surrounded by a field of lines, the weft and weave of the fabric that holds everything together. And this field of lines vibrates around the row of dots. This same matrix has been used throughout the book. The patterns repeat as events repeat around us socially and culturally. On the second page, Small dots grow to become a large, to become large at the centre fold, and the, and on the page facing this image is a quote from Lionel Shriver's short novel *The Standing Chandelier*. Yet it was infernally difficult to suspend your critical faculties. The fashioning of an opinion was almost synonymous with apprehension of the item in question. The next three double-page spreads present images a visual space to apprehend the action that Shriver analyzes. The third last page presents a further text from Shriver. Surely there was something to be said for simply looking. This little pamphlet presents an experience of beholding, opinion making and sensation. And maybe these activities, while the core work of an artist, are also the work of politics and social engagement. The text printed in everything cites Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama, who in 1959 wrote, uh, issued a manifesto stating that everything, myself, others, the entire universe, would be obliterated by white nets of nothingness connecting astronomical accumulation of, of dots. This is a very modest homage to Agnes Martin and Yayoi, Yayoi Kusama, uh, this little book, Everything, has two grids as its images to accompany the Kusama text. The images are relief prints made from fabric again, and everything in Everything is printed in pale blue. Neither of these printed grids are regular. They both waver around and stretch. One in particular morphs to suggest the marbling of old-fashioned end papers or maybe a mathematical diagram of a force field. The grids are net, nets. The net is a grid. But printed like this, bleeding off the page, they maybe could go on, as Kusama suggests, forever. Permutation explores similar themes, change that is constant as one thing becomes another in a series of transformations. Two texts are presented. These famous lines from Shakespeare's The Tempest, Full fathoms five thy father lies, Of his bones a coral made, these are pearls that were his eyes. And a dictionary definition of permutation, The exchange of one thing for another, commutation, alternation, transmutation. Two images fill these pages. The first that you've seen with the definition is of a field of black dots hovering in a field of static. And the other is a photographic intaglio print depicting glossy pearls. In 2014, 
uh, while working in Saudi Arabia, I discovered a contemporary portrait of one of their kings. Uh, uh, the, the patterning of a printed halftone dot had been employed and the king's face had been imaged in an arrangement of pearls on a black velvet ground. I couldn't tell if they were real or fake, but the idea of a real pearl, harvested from the darkness of the deep ocean, had become a copy. The pearl had been multiplied, its value immediately decreasing as it shifted from unique to copy, while uncannily the portrait still retained its links to a sovereign authority. I photographed the portrait to make this image to become a different type of treasure. I hope to keep working on this A3 library of exercises in visual language, representation and observation well into the future. Thank you.